Hello, my fellow Hime! Thank you for tuning in today. I really appreciate you being here. If you enjoy planty content, please like, comment, and subscribe. It would really help me out for the YouTube algorithm. Today, we will be talking about five things you can get plant lovers or plant hobbyists that are not plants. We will be discussing budget and pricier options and I will be comparing the two and letting you know what my personal preference is. This is obviously just my opinion. Other people's preferences may be different but I'm just giving you my two cents. So this here is a bamboo trellis. It's a two foot trellis that I got on Amazon. You can also get these at big box stores or your local nursery. It's great for plants with smaller foliage and this is the budget option. This was about $10 for one. I find that my Senecio Macroglossus variegata loves this one. It has kind of smaller leaves and it loves to just work its way up onto the ladder and I love this design because it fans outwards so as the plant gets bigger or goes up the ladder it has more room to grow. I know some people buy the individual pieces of bamboo and they make their own but this one is pre-made and it just saves on time and it's convenient. But yeah, great option for smaller plants with skinnier stems. And the pricier option would be a moss pole. Most of the time people DIY moss poles and honestly the price can add up which is why I chose this one to be the pricier option. It also takes time to make them and requires wire cutters and just time out of your day so it's like labor intensive I guess but if you're okay with that it's great. It requires mesh wire, sphagnum moss, and something to tie it with like zip ties or some kind of a uh, what do you call it? plant wire I think that's what it's called but these are great because they are customizable you can make them shorter or taller and you can pack in as much moss as you want but you also want to leave some room in the pole for the roots to grow into the pole. Moss poles are great because they mimic a tree so that an epiphytic plant can grow up and climb up the tree, which is your moss pole, and it can dig its roots into the moss. The moss is basically something that the plant can grip onto and it feels stronger and it feels like it has more of a foundation so that's why it can grow bigger leaves over time as it grows up the pole. As for my preference, I don't have a preference at this point. Both are wonderful and it really depends on the plant and it also depends on the person. Some people even like wooden planks to let their plants climb up. Some people prefer moss poles, some bamboo trellises. Who knows what else is out there to allow your plants to climb. I'm definitely still experimenting with different types of trellises and stakes and things so at this time I don't have a preference for either. I'm neutral and I'm trying both. Next we will be discussing clear plastic liners. The budget option is this heavy duty plastic liner. It's pretty deep and this one is the 10 inch diameter option. It's great for bottom watering and it's really heavy duty compared to something like this. Let me just demonstrate how flimsy this one is. So if I just bend my thumbs in, it bends the plastic. And with this one, it's really difficult to bend. It's a lot sturdier. When you're searching for one of these, search for a heavy duty clear plastic liner for plants. It makes a difference when you're trying to carry your plant somewhere or you're taking this away from your plant and trying to dump the water out. That way the water doesn't get all over the place and there's less risk of you dropping the plant since this is more sturdy. And the pricier option 
are ceramic saucers, maybe even terracotta I would maybe include in here as well. They're usually a little bit more shallow, but this one's pretty and white. I have a Peperomia Rainbow Jenny living on this one. And what I recommend is to give your plants a much wider saucer than the size of the pot. So that way, when you water your plants, the water can drain out and the water can have a place to go basically because if you give your plant a saucer that's too small the water will most likely overflow and you're gonna make a huge mess so that's why i have this four inch pot in maybe an eight inch saucer and this is actually appropriate for this plant even though it takes up more space you can also go for a cash po, which doesn't have a drainage hole, and put your plant in there, but we'll discuss that later. These can last a really long time, as long as you're careful not to break them or something. This one's pretty thick and heavy duty ceramic, so it probably doesn't break that easily. And I like the white color of it. It almost looks like a plate that you can eat off of. <laughs> Let's talk my preferences. In terms of saucers, I do prefer the heavy-duty clear plastic liner. You can get these for one or two dollars. It's really great for transporting your plant or water and just dumping it. It's more lightweight than ceramic or terracotta. And I would say that this is cheaper for a bigger size because a small little 3 inch terracotta saucer is already a dollar. This is a dollar too and you get a bigger size. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this. Next, we are discussing soil amendments. As long as your plant lover uses soil, they will absolutely love amendments for their plants. The more budget option would be Coco Choir, and I'm talking about the chunky coco choir not the super ground up one coco choir is the more budget option it is maybe 12 to 15 dollars for a block and the block lasts a really long time you just soak it in water and it will expand and you can break it apart and mix it in with your soil it's a really really great amendment and i feel like it is one of the most underrated amendments it makes the soil so chunky and it really prevents plants from getting waterlogged so when you water your plant over the top of the plant the weight of the soil just keeps going down because water is flowing down the pot, right? Every time you water it, the water is getting more and more compacted and just the soil basically just gets more and more dense as you water it over time. What Coco Choir does is it is just this giant chunk in the soil so that the worm castings and all the other organic matter, it doesn't get compacted as easily, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's the reason why I love Coco Choir. This is an example of a compacted waterlogged plant. The soil is pretty dense. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, it's pretty like compacted. And Coco Choir really helps with that. It helps your plants not get root rot. The pricier option would have to be pumice. Pumice is a great soil amendment. It doesn't break down very easily. It's a very hard substance, basically lava rock. I definitely like pumice a lot more than perlite. If I had the option, I would definitely go with pumice, but sometimes it's not as readily available and it is a more expensive amendment. It's a porous but very tough kind of rock that adds chunkiness and aeration to your soil and that's why i think it's really great it really is a great addition to your soil if you can add it if it's available to you and if you have the money to buy it so my preferences for amendments i would choose coco choir because like i said before it's definitely an underrated amendment in my opinion it's so great i feel like it it's part of the reason why my peperomia are still alive that's that's part of the reason honestly and it's just so chunky and so good for your soil i cannot stress how great amendments are for your soil and for your plants and for their health. I mean, soil amendments aren't the most exciting 
topic to some people, but sometimes you people love talking about it. Vocal choir would definitely be my pick if you were to get amendments for your planty friend or family member for the holidays. The fourth thing I want to discuss are decorative pots. So this one is a llama. It's a cute little pot. I actually coated this one with waterproof and stain proof. I'm actually going to be selling these ones, but they're for pickup only locally in the Bay Area. So if you're interested in anything like this, I also have dinosaurs and elephants, please reach out to me, message me, and let me know. I'm going to be selling these. I only have a limited stock of them, so let me know as soon as possible, especially if you want something cute like this for the holidays. This will fit a cute little succulent or a rooted cutting, just a small plant, and it does have a drainage hole right there. And the saucer is this geometric shape. I also put the waterproof and stainproof coating on the saucer as well. I put a lot of love into making this a quality product. I will show you examples of these planters with and without the stain and waterproof coating and you can see the difference. Both of them have had plants in them for a while and one is definitely still a lot whiter and cleaner looking and the other one without the coating it has more brown marks, water marks, or dirt marks on it that stained the pot because it doesn't have that coating on it. Selling these if you're interested. For pricier options there are ceramic pots like this, bigger ceramic pots. Some have plant stands, some don't, but they're really cute and really aesthetic. And usually they go for over $20. Little pots under $20 and bigger pots over $20. This one has a pretty marbling on it. I love the white with the gold marbling and the stand just like brings it all together. You can find pots like this on Amazon or your big box stores. You can find planters basically anywhere these days because so many people are into plants. I don't have a preference for budget or pricier options. It just depends what you're looking for. Obviously, smaller pots will only fit smaller plants and bigger pots will fit bigger plants. So yeah, just depends what you're looking for. Last but not least, we're talking about pest control. The budget option is, this is a systemic houseplant insect control powder. It's from Bonide and it's been working great for me so far. It has, I can't read it, imid, imidacloprid in it. It has those ingredients in it. <laughs> On the back it says, protects plants from damage by aphids, whiteflies, mealybugs, scale, and other listed insects. So the main ones that catch my eye are mealybugs and scale. Great one for mealybugs and scale. Those are very common indoor houseplant pests. I definitely recommend this if you can get your hands on it. I bought it on Amazon for under $10. It's been working great so far. You only have to apply it once every two months or so. That's what the directions say. And for smaller pots, you add less for example, a 4 inch pot you add 2 teaspoons and for bigger pots obviously you need to add more of this powder. The pricier option is insecticidal soap. I'm talking about the pre-made one in a spray container. This one is Bonide Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. These are over $10 which is why I believe this is the pricier pest control option. This one says it kills caterpillars, coddling moth, gypsy moth, loopers, leaf miners, spider mites, tent caterpillars, thrips, and more. So this covers a lot of different insects and I think that is a pro for this option. It definitely is pricey, especially if you have more plants. A bottle will only last you maybe a month or less 
depending how often you spray and how many plants you have. As a preventative, I would recommend using a neem oil mixture. Definitely dilute that neem oil or it will really damage your plants. It can get leaf burn. Trust me, I know from experience, but neem oil is definitely a more budget option if you mix your own and you DIY it. I should make a video about ratios another time because that's very important. But yeah, an alcohol mixture will definitely help with existing pests in your house. Thrips, I heard, are very scary pests to have in your home. So definitely if you have thrips, go for something like this. This spray where I live is around $12 to $15 a bottle, so definitely on the pricier side. My preference between the two would be the powder. It's cheaper, it covers scale and mealybugs, and I like that it's a powder so you can just pour it over your soil and it's not a spray so it doesn't get everywhere. A spray can definitely get more messy than a powder. I also like that you only have to apply this once every two months so it's definitely more low maintenance than having to spray it every day for three days or whatever the directions say but um, with the spray you usually have to be a little bit more consistent for a few days and then that will do it. Under $10 for this if you can get your hands on it. These are the five planty gifts that I would recommend to your planty lover in your family or your friend group or whoever it may be. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate your support and I will see you next week. Bye!